Hi, welcome to this video lesson, How to Use the Basic Compressor in GarageBand, which is being recorded as Assignment 4 of the Coursera course, Introduction to Music Production. My name is Kendall Giles, and I'm speaking to you right now from the middle of Virginia on the east coast of the United States. You can also find me online at my website, kendallgiles.com. A compressor is an important tool of the music producer to accentuate and enhance the tracks in a recording. Essentially, a compressor reduces the dynamic range of a track. It reduces the difference between the loudest and softest parts of the audio signal. This can increase the perceived loudness of the audio and can make for a more even performance. Because a compressor can change the timbre of a sound, music producers use compressors for a variety of reasons. For example, it can be used to de-s to reduce the harsh s sounds in a vocal performance. In GarageBand, the basic compressor is a fundamental plug-in. It's available on all tracks in addition to the master track. To turn the compressor on, click this little on-off indicator, and when the plug-in is active, you'll see a little light here. The most simple way to use the plug-in is to select from this drop-down list one of the many available presets, and then pick a preset closest to the application you want. Do you want a punchier bass? Select the bass punchier preset. However, I prefer to adjust the parameter settings myself. To see the parameter settings, click right here. This is the resulting pop-up window showing the four parameters that are available in the basic GarageBand compressor. Threshold is the decibel level at which the compression starts. When the audio signal reaches the set threshold, then the compressor kicks in. It reduces the resulting signal by a given ratio, which is the ratio of the input signal to the compressed output signal. How fast the compressor starts when the audio goes above the threshold is determined by the attack parameter, and the gain of the resulting output signal is adjusted by this gain parameter. Unfortunately, in the basic compressor plugin for GarageBand, there are no other visuals other than the sliders to adjust these parameters. I encourage you to set these parameters in the order that they're given in the pop-up window. The two most important parameters are threshold and ratio. And just to give you a concrete example, so you can get a feel for the values that you're setting, if the threshold is at minus 15 dB and the ratio is 5 to 1, and if you have, say, a incoming minus 10 decibel signal, which is 5 decibels above the threshold, the resulting output signal will be compressed at a level of minus 14 decibels. As for the attack, I would suggest adjusting this depending on the nature of the instrument in the track. Drums have a fast attack, so you're probably going to need a fast attack for the compressor. And because the resulting output signals are compressed, you might be able to raise the gain of the overall track. However, be careful you don't distort the signal. Note that applying a compressor can change the timbre of your sound, so be sure to listen carefully as you adjust these parameters and choose the settings based on how it sounds and your overall goals for the track. As a basic example of compression, I've made a simple voice recording and I'm going to play that track for you twice. First, not compressed, and then compressed. So here is the non-compressed audio. One, two, three, four, <laughs> six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now here's the compressed audio. One, two, three, four, <laughs> six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You may need to listen to this with headphones, but there is a distinct difference between the compressed and the non-compressed audio. So that's it for a simple tutorial on how to use the basic compressor in GarageBand. Best of luck, and I hope this tutorial helps you produce great recordings. Thank you for watching, and please keep in touch.